everyone, welcome to our first week of Cooking with Megan and Brooke. And I'm excited about today's menu, Megan. What kind of main course are we talking about here? So Brooke, I am going to start with making our pot roast. I thought this would be a good idea for all the cold nights, have uh, a good, warm, savory roast. Um, but I uh, was going to cook the pot roast and then you were going to do... Yes, it's hard to think for me of a side dish when you're putting vegetables in a roast. So we were thinking, okay, so what's something that's a, just a complimentary dish? And we're going to do a fruit salad to go along with it. And the thing I like about a fruit salad is once you put it all together, it kind of makes a lot. And you have a little snack for the rest of the week. That's a great idea, bro. <laughs> Thanks, pal. So I guess we'll get started. Yes. Um, we thought this would be something quick and easy. Um, I know a lot of you are busy. And this is something I like to do that you can prep the night before. Um, I cook my roast in a crock pot um, because I start it usually the night before I'm wanting to eat the meal. Um, so like if I start it for tonight, um, I would have it tomorrow night. Um, and let it cook a long time and it gets super tender if you let it cook like that um, but you can also cook it in an instant pot which i have not tried but we, although you have one <laughs> i do have one i'm just nervous to try it you can comment if you have and let me know how it went but apparently if you're cooking a two pound roast um, you need to cook it for 40 minutes because it's 20 minutes per pound of meat that you're using in the instant pot. And I think Brooke cooks hers in the oven. I do. I, how long do you cook it, Brooke? Um, I guess I usually do about a two pound one too, just because leftovers are easy for the whole week. <laughs> and you cook it for how long? I think I put mine in about three o'clock and we eat supper about six o'clock. So I would say about three hours on 350. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. um, I am using a chuck roast from the grocery store. Um, I chose chuck. Apparently that's like a popular pot roast meat. Um, but you can also use brisket and a round roast. Um, but supposedly the chuck roast is the best meats for pot roast. So that's what we're going to use. Um, I just put it in the bottom of my crock pot. Um, then I cut up my potatoes. And um, I already had these peeled. You don't have to peel your potatoes. But I like to peel mine. And you can also just go ahead and get some round potatoes, um, like the golden potatoes, I believe, is mm -hmm. one, or the yellow. The smaller ones? Yeah, the small round ones, and just throw those in there. It's a lot easier than even this if you want to do that. Um, but I just cut up my potatoes in um, just little squares. And, um, and they don't get too tender cooking it all night? No, they're Ooh. actually really delicious. Wow. But, I mean, it is a softer potato, uh -huh. but it's still good. So, I just cut those up. I usually throw in the, an onion because Jody likes onions. I do not like onions. I like them. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> but I just pick them off. So, I bet oh, it gives the meat a really good flavor, too. It does. And so, I just throw some of those in. And also, um, I throw in a bag of baby carrots instead of getting like the big, um, the, the bigger regular carrots. I like just getting the bag of the small baby carrots and uh, just throwing the whole bag in there. And so um, once we get that done, super easy. I just use this Slow Cookers McCormick mix. It's for hearty beef stew. Um, this is not a I'm not uh, sponsored by the McCormick, <laughs> <laughs> but it really is really good. Uh, mom always, my mom always used this in her pot roast, and it was super delicious. But I went ahead and mixed some up. I use, It says one and one third cup of water, but I go ahead and get two cups of water and pour the packet in just so that the, the juice kind of covers all the meat and vegetables. Since I'm going to be cooking it for a whole day, I just want... It doesn't completely cover the vegetables, but it does pretty much cover the meat. Um, so just make sure you have plenty of liquid in there. And now that that's done, I basically just turn my crock pot on, set it on high, and leave it until the next day. Sometimes my crock pot does turn off because it's been on for too long. So usually that happens like right before supper time though, so I don't know. You 
crock pot might have a timer to turn off. You might want to check that. <laughs> but yeah, so now this is ready to put the lid on and start cooking for tomorrow night. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Thanks. Very colorful. <laughs> well, I'll get started over here on our fruit salad. So there are many different things you can put in it. I'm going to put in some of my favorite fruits and then also because I'm sharing with Megan, I'm going to put in some of her favorite fruits. And a little trick I've learned is um, I start off with adding a little bit of orange juice to my bowl because everything uh, like the apples, well just mainly the apples, they'll turn brown very fast. So I'm going to put some oranges, some grapes, some blueberries. I meant to go grab a whole bag of oranges, but turns out I grabbed a bag of grapefruits. They're kind of small for grapefruits. They are. It really confused me. So um, I'm going to throw all this together, and then I used um, green and red grapes. And if I had time, I would cut those in half because I don't like them rolling around on my plate. Megan's favorite, blueberries. I love blueberries. And Stephen's favorite, some cherries. I love maraschino cherries. <laughs> and this is just, this is not fruit, but it does help uh, me and children <laughs> like the fruit salad a little better. It's some marshmallows. And um, I'll cut this up in a little bit because it just takes some time. I wanted to show y'all my cool little technique of um, and how to slice an apple. So, Stephen and I also like drying apples on a, on a hydrator, dehydrator? Dehydrator. Dehydrator. And this little trick, you just slide it on. This, uh-oh, Megan, I'm gonna try not to get in your floor. I should have slid it over a little more. <laughs> See how that little thing works? Well, that's cool. I don't know. It takes all the work out of slicing an apple. And it cored it. It cored it as well. Oh, I'm sorry, look at this mess. Well, that is cool. And now all you have to do is do one slice down the middle. So where did you get that thing? <laughs> it was a gift. Oh. I'm pretty sure, um, well, I better not say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen some at Burton's. Okay. <laughs> but surely Amazon that has it. That is really it. cool. And then we'll just add, um, our orange and grapefruit stirred up and it look i mean that's just a few things and look how much it makes and so the orange juice kind of keeps it from turning yes especially the apples i always thought to put lemon juice and it always made it too sour for me so i know juice would be perfect. yes and if i wasn't sharing i would probably throw a little bit of coconut flakes on top too but megan don't like coconut i'm so picky <laughs> it's okay <laughs> i thought i would share another way to make this even easier <laughs> I pulled out my oh, Del Monte um, fruit <laughs> mix. That you can works always too. just pop the can open and pour it in a bowl, and it it's does the trick. So. It's true. Oh, and our pineapple. Oh, yeah. yes, we love. Megan and I both love pineapple, so I'm gonna add some pineapple to this as well. Yeah. All right. Well, this sounds like it's gonna be pretty good. All right. I can't wait. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>